Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about the Dragons of Tarkir and the expected value of a box has actually gone up in price which is very very unlike a set. So normally when a Magic the Gathering set comes out it plummets in price after at this point in time. But Dragons of Tarkir, unlike most MTG Finance people, if you read the articles uh, they didn't like Death Miss Raptor, they didn't like Ataka, they did not like Ojate, they pretty much boo hoo hooed this entire set and were saying that it's only EDH and we could pick up Dragon Havens at like 50 cents, we could pick up all these EDH staples for very cheap. They were absolutely completely wrong. So read the articles they are writing about Dragons of Tarkir and pretty much saying that all these cards suck. Which you know, it's kind of like every single set they say something along the lines of these cards suck because when at pre-release time most cards are very hyped and they're actually more expensive than after a few weeks later when people have more cards in their inventory from the new set. Now I want to talk about Dragons of Tarkir and why it's holding its price. Not only is it holding its price, it's going up. A lot of the staples, Death Miss Raptor, uh, and the dragons, all the elder dragons except Dromoka and Colagon and Nonfoil have been pretty well. They've been doing extremely well. And even some cards like Dragon Haven that people predicted was like 50 cents, maybe a dollar, have held up value uh, incredibly well. And that's because this set is just fun. The set is fun. It's not like a typical set where you have fetch lands or shock lands or where a lot of the money is stuck in the mana base. Actually a lot of people felt like Dragons of Tarkir was Dragon Maze and they've made comments saying that the value would be similar to Dragon Maze which I absolutely, <laughs> when I read those comments, I don't read many MTG Finance articles but like you have to stop reading when you read something like that. Because that's not reliable information. Uh, dragons and Tark here, it's fun to play with dragons. It's fun outside of ED. It's fun to play with your Icefall, your Thunder Break. All these dragon cards are good cards and decent cards uh, in a standard format. And they're only going to get better in my opinion. Ataka, all of these, especially the Elder Dragon Lords as well as Death Miss Raptor. Death Miss Raptor I didn't see that as a particularly valuable card. I felt like it would be good, but I didn't really see that it could be... I felt like you had to play other morph cards to make it like decent, playable. But in fact, you can just play four of those and it's actually playable. So a lot of the commands, I believe, the Ataka's command, what's it, Atarka's command, whoever, who cares what it's called. Uh, Jomoka's command. A lot of these commands are decently priced cards. If you open a booster pack, you get the value you spend back, at least at retail. So the set itself, uh, for the casual player, if it depends. I like it sealed, meaning fat packs. I love fat packs, and I wouldn't mind having a few extra fat packs of this particular set to draft later on. The set itself is extremely fun. Who doesn't like a set where it's big dragons against big dragons? Apparently, most of the uh, people who were speculating on MTG Finance didn't like these dragons. And they were biased against them. Kind of like how they were biased against a 6 mana Planeswalker. They were biased against uh, a Force of Resurgence. I mean, there's a lot of biases. Or Archangel, Angel cards they've been biased against. Or they say, oh, just wait until our price drops. But you need to play the cards. I mean, you need to play the card. You can't just listen. If you needed your Death Miss Raptors, the smart thing would be to order them once they, like a week after they came out, or pretty close to when they came out, and put them in your deck if you like them. If you want your Dragon Lords, you want them for EDH, just buy them. Like, honestly, buy them. A lot of this kind of, uh, let's make money from this game mentality, you're right 50% of the time, and then you're right you're wrong 50% of the time. The only problem is you always exclaim that you're right, you always put it out there that you're right, and you never say that you're wrong. And a lot of these, uh, a lot of the articles I've written 
uh, luckily their articles and it's kind of easy to see like these cards I mean they've just not to call anyone out on it but uh, people wanted me to look at the articles and say like what I believe I mean it's so fascinating to me that some of these articles are just so wrong about these cards I mean it's just um, especially about the Elder Dragons in particular the blue white and then the green red outer dragons are very very good cards and you should look at them and be like okay seven for a huge flyer that destroys stuff okay that's pretty good five for a five four flyer with hex proof with pseudo hex proof that draws you cards okay that's pretty good and there was a time where the dragon lord ujite was seven bucks it's not seven bucks anymore it's 28 bucks uh, and I got my playset because I was like, yeah, I'll probably play this eventually sometime in standard. And people were saying it was a bad card. People were saying a lot of pros liked it, but a lot of the people in the finance felt like seven bucks was too much for the card. And you can say that about Deathmiss Raptor. You can say that about all these cards that are fun. These cards are fun to play with. They are uh, great to have in playsets, and you know they're very useful. Like. I will overtrade for dragons because I need them for my deck. Like my Thunderbreak Regents promos, I wanted a playset of them. I actually want a playset and an extra one. Yes, I'm going to trade out of the nodes to get my promo, but at the same time, it hasn't really gone down in price. It's kind of stuck the same. Uh, my lesson to you guys is play Magic to have fun. Don't play Magic to try to make money or you know, you're not going to make more than you would make at Walmart or McDonald's in the same given time. Uh, if buy cards, a lot of times you guys want me to do speculation, and I do have a speculation for you actually, I don't know if I want to make a whole video about this, but uh, Monastery Mentors, it's a good card, I like it, it I, reminds me a lot of Brimaz, except I feel like this card is insanely stronger than Brimaz, so uh, that would be my speculation for the week, but yeah, having said that, a lot of times, it is hit or miss, but most people don't like say, oh, I missed. Or the language of these articles are very like, oh, well, it could go up if XYZ happens, or it could go down if ABC happens, but it also could go to the side, it could go left, it could go right. I mean, it's like, <laughs> like what is going on? Like, you know, what is going on? <laughs> like, is, should I buy it? Should I hold it? Should I sell it? Sometimes when I read these articles, it's unclear to me what the action item is. Should there be an action item? And then, you know, a week later or two weeks later, card spikes or drops in price and then the article writer is like, oh, I was so right about this card. I was like, well, I don't know exactly what you say. I mean, you left um, leeway to, uh, you left a lot of leeway to kind of change your opinion about the card. Uh, I'm, I'm not an expert in MTG Finance. I never want to be an expert in MTG Finance, uh, if at all possible. It would be great if another YouTube channel just made these MTG Finance videos so you guys would stop asking me uh, to talk about it. But that being said, I just want you guys to know that a lot of people have certain self-interest when they want to promote a card or when they... Um, seance. I mean, the guy who wants to burn seance, he probably has a ton of seances. And why does he have a ton of seances? Because somebody, some time, long time ago, told him seance was like the best card ever. He believed it. He probably purchased a. If he's going to spend a thousand dollars in seance, he probably has, let's say, ten thousand copies of it, and he probably got it at like ten cents a copy. So maybe he has a hundred. I mean, these are all made up numbers, but I'm assuming if you have, or you're going to spend a thousand dollars to pay people to burn the card. And this was a story about a guy on Reddit who was going to pay a thousand dollars for people to burn seances. And he was dead serious. He had a bank account. And it's like, why would you do that? Unless you yourself had more than a thousand dollars in seances and you were hoping a price spike. So uh, most people who are, most people are paid to write articles, right? So it's just like any newspaper, you are driven to, I mean, even it's like any YouTube channel, really, uh, you're driven to try to get views, you're driven to try to get attention, and if you're holding $10,000 of this card and you have to pay $1,000 and the card doubles, you're ahead. So a lot of times, I don't read MTG Finance articles, I don't listen to the 
uh, listen to them. I don't know if there's anyone on YouTube uh, who does MTG Finance. I mean, uh, Mythic MTG is great. Check his channel out. He does really good MTG Finance. My opinion is just make your decisions by yourself. Uh, you can take advice. I guess you can read it and stuff, but honestly, at the end of the day, the best speculations I've ever made were ones where people hated the crap out of that speculation. Voice people said it would die to Pillar of Flames, which it did. But then, like, it's like, what happens after Pillar rotates? This card's going to dominate. And it did dominate for a very long time. Uh, Elspeth, six man of Planeswalker back in the day. Like, I mean, a lot of people are not going to remember this, but people like, six mana is too much for this Planeswalker. Too much for any Planeswalker. Well, Elspeth won, I believe, one PTQ, it won, oh, not one PT, one GP, it's one, like, a Pro Tour. I mean, it is, uh, six is good enough because the life gain survives the revelation at that time you survive long enough that uh, it's not a problem and then the other one Archangel they were boo hoo hooing Archangel because Archangel was kind of slow I mean it was five and doesn't really have an enter the playability but I mean it's so good it's just so good it can just take over a game like this and yeah, so a lot of my best speculations in the Underworld Connects, all these speculations, the ones that I have considered my best speculations have been the ones that people hated the most, uh, people disagreed with the most. And when you're making your big speculation, when you're trying to go ahead and you're trying to, I don't know, like it's fun. It is a fun, if you treat it as a fun hobby, like MTG Finance, MTG Speculation, you're going to have a really fun time. I can guarantee you that. But the best ones I have, if everyone's saying this card is good, the card is too hyped. Do not buy that card. If people are saying the card's bad, but you feel like that card is good, take a chance at it. Like that's how you make money from MTG Finance. That's how you make amazing trade bait. Because if everyone's saying this card is good, chances are you already missed the boat. The boat has already left. You're not on it. The price is already spiking. It spiked to a point that by the time you get your cards in the mail, you're going to be the one left with the bag are the cards. So just make a very make a very smart decision for you uh, regardless of what 99% of the finance people are telling you about the card uh, and that's my biggest that's why I don't want to give as much finance advice anymore because my advice doesn't matter. You know I, my advice doesn't matter about it. At the end of the day it's how you feel about the card, how you have interacted, how what decks you feel like the card's going to find a home in not what some dude wrote an article trying to uh, behind a paywall, which you can't even look at until like two months later. I mean, imagine this. Imagine like ordering Wall Street Journal and then like getting it like two, a month later. <laughs> what? Anyway, um, those are probably my biggest pet peeves about uh, some of what goes on on in the uh, speculation community, if you will. Uh, it just doesn't really make sense to me why, why, I mean, if you're reading an article and someone's saying buy this card, and if even if they say buy this card, which they won't, they'll say kind of buy it, short of buy it, maybe buy it, it could go up, it could go down, it could go plummet, it could skyrocket, like, even if uh, there was an article that said buy this card, and that's all I said, and that's all I really should say, buy this card, and had a picture of the card. By the time you read the article, even if it's like 10, 15 minutes later, to buy out a card takes pretty much no time at all. You can buy out a card in five minutes, five to 10 minutes if you really wanted to. You could buy all out in TCG player, no problem, especially if the card is low in supply. Sec but you have to realize, does the guy who's telling you to buy the card, has he already purchased the card? Could be. Could not be. I don't know. There's not really that much transparency right now, in my opinion. Again, all of this is my opinion. Uh, take it with a grain of salt. I'm not the biggest fan. Like right now, I like playing Magic for fun, and I don't make money from Magic. I will openly tell you, I spend money on Magic um, at this point in time. When in the past, I probably uh, broke even at least as a hobby. So I don't know. At the end of the day, a lot of times people will give you bad advice and they will knowingly give you bad advice. Um, and that's because of their own self-interest. 
Do, does MTG Lion have self-interest? Yes, he has self-interest. Does the right article writer have self-interest? Yes, they have self-interest. My self-interest, however, has um, moved to pretty much what I want to do. So a lot of times this channel is just, I mean, it has no, no organization. It's just my channel. Uh, it's just me talking to you guys. So my self-interest is uh, helping you guys budget yourself. And that's the way to be good at MTG Finance or getting a collection is not to like listen to people who have news which is already old and that people, thousands of people are reading or hundreds of people are reading or listening to and they can in, within two minutes buy out this card if they really wanted to um, or the card's already been purchased before the article was article put up. But yeah, I mean it, at the end of the day, I don't. I have no interest in that field anymore. I don't have any interest in MTG finance or MTG speculation, except when I have to make videos like this, which sometimes I have to make. Bye, guys.